Yo, what's up Wingness? Welcome to BST4 channel where we're going to install this uh, control arm on an 05 Lincoln Town Car plus this um, front strut. So let's get to it. It's a headache because I just don't feel like doing it. With this car here, this was kind of different. Now I'm using the 12 down here and a 14 up here don't ask me why but that's how it has to do on this car yours is going to have either or in most cases you may come up with a situation where the caliper does not want to come off you just not the proper way to do it but you kind of get it in between the piston here and here and you kind of squeeze back on it the top and over here at the bottom this bolt and there's another one right there. Those are 18s. You slap that on there and take that off. So we should be able to use a 15 on here. Hopefully this gun will get it off. If not, you gotta use the... I lucked out with this bottom one. I didn't have to use a wrench on it. Thank goodness. Because I didn't really feel like being bothered with the thing out. It has to come out because you want nice clearance when you're messing with that bolt back there. So you get a 22 socket and uh, get with it right here. Sucks, but this is what you got to do, man. Just take your time. From that, now we hit this one. This one goes up. And the other side goes down. Bolts up top. These are loosened, but these can't come out because this gotta come out. Some people leave them in and kind of wiggle it through. I am going to take the whole thing out. So we use a 24 over here. Yeah, this thing here. This is in the way a little bit, so we're going to take this out. Well, this one came out, but the other side ain't coming out. It's just one of these flat hand side and stuff like that. Before we begin, there's a control arm. You see these? You got the little dots here, dot, 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 dot. And then you got the other side that has a dot, dot, dot on that side. This is the one we just took out. So does it have a dot? It has a dot on that side. Um, the original equipment has an R on it. This one doesn't have an R, as you can see. It's the bootleg one. I didn't want to spend $100 a piece for the original one. I know, my bad. But here's the R, the dot, dot, dot on this side, dot, dot, dot on that side, and that's the one that we need, this one. Even though physically, they almost look the goddamn same. In most cases, if you look at it up here like this, it looks the same, but you gotta roll with the dots, man. So the dot on this one is there, and we're rolling with this one. This one's for the other side. All right, to install this thing, more than likely, I think, you put this strut inside first. So we put one over here. No, you guys can't see it, but over here, and then this one here. Somehow knock it in. All right, they kind of went through this a little bit quick, everything, and then underneath here, you, have, you know, put the jack in. That bolt stays, always stays in, because you have to press down on this to get that up in there. Um, I think everything's supposed to be around 110 foot-pounds. Everything, that, that, and the bolt underneath here somewhere that I didn't put on yet, and I have to install everything else. And you kind of just, you just, boom, slide that in. And that's really it. So we'll tighten that up. Two bolts right there I cannot catch from the top. I just tried. It's, I can get the front, but I can't get the back one. So I have to put uh, the jack underneath and, and just really jack it up to compress it. As you can see, it's compressed. And then I'm going to tighten up these two bolts here. And double check everything, make sure everything is tightened. Well, it's uh, done. Um, we have a situation where I have to get an alignment. So that's what I'm going to go do tomorrow because if you see that wheel there, it looks nice and straight. Then you dip over here, and you see that one? 
That one's a little bit crooked. And you go back over here. You see that one? It's crazy. So, man, thank you guys for watching this. I mean, it's really not a how-to. It's just how I did it real quick. You know, is it simple? Kind of. If you're replacing it and with, um, like, some already some struts that's already loaded, they don't even clock the damn thing right. It's this piece on top of this strut here. It just wasn't clocked in the right position to really get it right. So, now we had a situation with this. I wanted to put on the bullet wheels on this just to see how the car looks and everything like that. They do not fit. Not because they're um, 17s or the 18s. It's because of that right there. The wheel's so wide it hits on that. So it needs a, a, a spacer. But if you're gonna put a spacer on it, you might as well start doing the disc brakes. Makes sense, right? So I started looking on the internet for a while. Probably took me around seven hours. I mean seven straight hours to really find out what I need. And we came up with a front and back situation. Now, whew, it's cold out here. But uh, we're going to use a lot of junkyard parts. We're going to mock it up with all the junkyard parts and slowly swap out the junkyard parts for brand new stuff. Pads, all that stuff. We use all the old stuff first to make sure everything fits and then we'll get the new stuff put it in that sounds like a plan so thank you for watching build something tv i'm going to take my behind to the flea market just in case to see if there's anything out there that's what i do every once in a while drop a guy off out there to the flea market and while i'm dropping him off i check and see if there's anything tantalizing to pick up for cheap Cause that's how I roll now. I used to hate the flea market, but it has its purpose. You know, I don't really go there. I'm driving the guy there, so while I'm there, I go and check it out. I don't think I would just go there just to go there, but uh, it just makes sense. So um, thank you guys for watching. See you guys next time. And we are going to get to put disc brakes on this old girl here. All right, see you guys.